Hello and welcome. This is Seth's video number 16 and today we are learning what is meant by union of sets. Now union of sets is defined as follows. Let's say we have two sets, set A and B. The union of A and B is actually a set that will contain all elements of A and all elements of B. There will be no repetition in the set. So let's say, let's take an example. Let's say we have set A, which is represented as 1, 2. These are two elements in set A. And we have a set B that contains, let's say, maybe 10 and 20. Now, A union B, first, of, first let's find out what is the symbol that we should use. So, for example, when we have two real numbers, say 2 and 3, when we want to add them, we use this symbol. Or when we want to subtract them, we use this symbol. So, what is the symbol we should use for union? And the symbol is this. It is basically, uh, it's shaped like U. So, I kind of made it a little bit slanting, but it is actually shaped like U, U for union. So, what is A union B? Well, A union B will be a set like we have seen it will be a set and what will the set contain we know a set contains element or elements so it will contain all elements of a so let's write all elements of a which is one and two here so we will write one comma two and then all elements of b b has 10 and 20 so we will write 10 and 20. so this set that we have the set that contains the element elements 1, 2, 10, and 20. This represents A union B. Now let's take a look at some more examples. So let's say we take the set A as the way we did. So let's say 1, 2. Let's take a third element here, 3. And for B, let's have B the same as 10, 20. So what is A union B. So A union B will be simply a set that will contain all elements of A which is 1, 2 and 3. So let's write that down 1, 2 and 3 and then all elements of B which is 10 and 20. 10 and 20. So this is our first example. Let's take our second example. In this case let's take A, the set A as this time 1 comma 2 and let's make it 20. The third element is 20 and let's keep our set B the same. So our set B is 10 comma 20. Now what is A union B? So again this is the union symbol. This is the union symbol and like I said it should be U. It, it is shaped like U. This did not come out very well, but this is a little bit better. So A union B, what is A union B in the second example? Well, we will we know that it is a set, so we will write all elements of A. So we will write 1, 2, 20. Now then we will write all elements of B, so we will write 10, 20. Is that correct? This is actually wrong. This 20 should not appear. Why? Because remember, we do not, do not repeat elements, right? So it will be only 1, 2, 20, 10. So this is A union B. Now we have studied Wayne diagrams before. So let's find out what is the union of sets from a Wayne diagram standpoint. I'm going to provide the link of Wayne diagrams in the top right hand side corner of this video and also in the description below of this video. Now let's take a look at the first example where if our, our Wayne diagram, let's say this is our set A and this is our set B and this is a universal set. The reason we can represent the first example in this fashion is because remember we did not have any common elements right we had 1 2 and 3 and then we had 10 and 20 so we can almost think of this as maybe 
um, I should have written this as 1, comma, 2, comma, 3. Think of this as a big giant comma. Actually, let's just clean this up. This looks really bad. So let's say this is 1, this is 2, and this is 3. And here we have 10 and 20. So there are no common elements. So in this case, the, the A union B will look like this. So the highlighted or the colored part represents A union B. So that means the A union B will be a set that contains all elements of A. This is A. And then it will contain all elements of set B. So it will contain 1, 2, 3, 10, and 20 over here. Now let's take a look at the second example. In the second example, you see how they overlap. So this is A and this is B. This is the universal set. And remember here, element 20 was common, right? So we had 1, 2, 20, and set B had 10 and 20. So in this case, how will A union B look like? It will actually look something like this. So if this is set A, this is B, and this is U. So A union B is again represented by the colored or the highlighted part here. And notice here how we did not make the entire circle B this light green or light bluish green color. We made only part of the circle B this color. Why? Because this part where our element 20 is, it is already getting covered in A. When we make A the full circle, this common part is already considered once. If we were to color it again, then that means we are double counting this part, which we cannot do. Because we know that in a set, we do not repeat elements. So when we do A union B, we take all elements of A, we take all elements of B, but we do not have repetitions. That is why we have written it this way. So here, if this is 1, this is 2, and this is 10, so this will be simply 1, 2, 20, and 10. Right, so here, we did not actually write it, but we could have written this 1, 2, 3, 10 and 20. Now let's take a look at some properties of unions of sets. So the first property is commutative property, which is simply A union B is the same as B union A. Now logically this makes sense because A union B, we can think of it as a set that contains some elements, right? But what are these elements? These elements basically represent all elements in set A and B, which will be the same as B union A, because B union A is also going to represent a set that will have all elements of A and B. Hence, this two will basically represent the same set. So A union B is equal to B union A. This is known as commutative law. Let's take a look at our second law. A union B and that set union C is the same as A union, the set B union C. Now, again, conceptually, this is pretty clear because A union B will be a set that contains all elements of A and B. And when we do a union of that with set C, we will get a set that has all elements of A, all elements of B, and all elements of C, which is exactly what we are going to get here. We'll be here on the right side, we will first do B union C, which will give us all elements of set B and C. And then we will take that set and do a union with A, and the resulting set will have all elements of A, B, and C, which is the same as this. And the way to kind of think about that conceptually is you can kind of think of this as, let's say, 2 plus 3, an entire thing plus, let's say, 7. This is the same as... 2 plus 3 plus 7. Now, clearly, union is not the same as addition. 
this is just a way to think about this because this is known as associative law. So this is associative law and similarly this is associative law. Right? Let's take a look at the third property. Third property is a union, a null set. So let's write null set. This is phi, which is a null set. A union null set is set A. This is known as law of identity element. Now, let's conceptually figure this out. So let's write a set A as maybe A contains element 1 and 2. I've randomly written the set A. Now, we know that a null set also represented by phi, and I'm going to provide the description of null set or void set or empty set on the top right side corner of this video. A null set does not have any elements. It, there are no elements inside of a null set. So when we say A union null set, what do we get? That means we have to write all elements of A, which is 1, 2, and all elements of null set, but null set has nothing, so we don't write anything else. And now what is this? This is nothing but set A. And hence, A union null set is set A. Let's take a look at the next property. A union A is A. This is known as idempotent law or idempotent law. Now this is again conceptually very clear because if we, let's do it maybe over here. So we have A as 1, comma 2. Now when we do A union A, so if you first write all elements of A, and now we have to write all elements of A again, but we know that we do not repeat elements. That means it will be just this, which is nothing but set A. So A union A is equal to A. And finally, the last property of union of sets, which is now, this is actually universal set U. So universal set union, any set A, will be the universal set. This is known as law of U, as in law of universal set. Now, conceptually, again, this is pretty clear. If we think of, uh, let's draw a rectangle. So from a Venn diagram standpoint, this is our universal set. And let's draw a set A shown by a circle inside that. Now when we do A universal, A union universal set, that means we are writing all elements that belong to set A and all elements that belong to set U. So clearly the resulting set will be this, which is nothing but the universal set. So this is known as law of U or law of universal set. So if you have enjoyed this video and if you are enjoying these videos and if you want to get these videos immediately when I upload them, please subscribe to the channel and also check out the new website www.risingperm.com.